Hello and welcome to another video of the OutSystems Advocacy Team. This video is a sequel of sorts from the video that was published last week. You can find the link to that video on the description. And what we did last week was creating cascading combo boxes. So a recap of uh, the behavior that we did last week. So I have here three combo boxes, one for suppliers, uh, one for a category of products and the list of products. And so each one of the products have the product name, the product category, and the supplier. If I select a specific category like dairy products, the product combo box is updated to show only the dairy products. If I select, say, beverages, I can see only the beverages, and I can do the same thing for suppliers. If I select exotic liquids. I have only the products supplied by exotic liquids. I can also filter by, say, beverages, and I have only the two beverages supplied by exotic liquids. If I select a combination that yields no results, meaning uh, exotic liquids does not supply grains and cereals, the product combo box is disabled. Now, the feature that we're going to do on this video is using combo boxes special values, uh, which is a very powerful tool uh, that people underutilize. So in our case here, once again, I have the default state where I have all suppliers and all the categories, and I want to select the top supplier, the supplier that gives me the most products. So if I select top supplier here, I'm going to get all the products by Pavlova, which is the company that supplies the most products with five. So let's get started on developing this feature using special values. Now one slight change I had to make from last week's uh, video is the way I populate the product combo box. Uh, to use the special values I had to create a couple of local parameters. Uh, one of them called product combo box entry and the second one called product combo box list. So product combo box entry is, uh, is one record containing the full product details, full product details being the name of the product, the category and the supplier, all in the same string, and the product ID. And the product combo box list is just a list of that specific record containing full product details and product ID. And I'm using this product combo box list to now populate the product combo box. As you can see here on source record list, I have the product combo box list. On the source attribute, I have the full product details. And the identifier is the product ID. On preparation, uh, we can see what I'm doing so I have three aggregator I get all the categories and I get all the supplies and I have an aggregator I get the products with category and supply information if you want to know more about this specific aggregates please check last week's video once I have the list of products with categories and supplies if the list is bigger than zero what I do is I iterate over the list that is returned by this aggregate and I assign for my product combo box entry local variable I assign the full product details and the product ID with the values returned by my get products with categories and suppliers aggregate so I set up this variable and I finally append this variable on my list and I repeat the process again uh, as you've seen, if by any chance my list of products is empty, meaning if the length of my return equals zero, I disable the product combo and uh, disable the, the product combo box. And in this case, I enable it. Uh, one thing that we also did last week is whenever we change a category or a supplier, we call a screen action, and on the screen action, I do the exact same thing. Right? First of all. I clear my product combo box list. I refresh my 
aggregate with the new information and once again I go over the list and rebuild the product combo box list uh, local parameter and that's it um, so now let's get started with actually developing the behavior for the special value so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my combo box screen and on my supplier combo box I'm gonna add another element to my special list and let's call it top supplier as you can see we already had one value which was minus one with the option all suppliers that once again would bring me products from all suppliers now why we use negative values on the special list is to ensure that our special valuable val values do not clash with IDs from the database so that's why we use negative values and these values are stored on the special variable, variable which as the description says holds the value selected by the user if this value belongs to the defined special list I already have this variable here called special supplier variable and now I can get started creating the logic for the top supplier option so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go to the screen action on supplier combo box change I'm going to add a if statement here and let's label it top supplier selected and on the condition I'm going to check if my special supplier variable equals minus two if it does equals minus two the first thing I need to do is uh, check what is my top supplier which company supplies me the most products to do that I'm gonna create a new aggregate let's double click on it and here I'm gonna add my product entity and on my product entity I let's hide these two uh, these two columns here on my product entity I have the supplier ID the ID of the company that supplies me this specific product let us hide these other attributes so we just have the product name and supplier ID first thing I do I group my products by supplier ID so now I see that supplier ID 1 pro provides me these three products supplier 2 with D supplier 6 with 3 whatever now I will also group, I will also count the number of products on each one of these groups so I can see here that from from uh, what I'm seeing here for now uh, supplier number seven is the one that supplies me the most with five products finally I'm going to sort my query by the count in descending order so now I can see that I have here supplier number 12 provides me with five supplier number seven also, supplier number seven also provides me with five but you know I I'm not gonna care about this tie I'm just wanting one of the top suppliers so I'm gonna limit on the aggregate the return of the aggregate to one max record there you go so this is the supplier that supplies me the most products supplier ID number seven with Pavlova Alice Mutton Carnival Tigers etc great let's get back to my action I already have the supplier ID and now I'm going to create the exact same aggregate that gets me the full product information, the product with, uh, with the category and the supplier, but I'm going to filter that by my top supplier. So on this aggregate here, I'm going to have my product aggregate and my supplier aggregate and my category aggregate and of course as I add these aggregates uh, if I go to the sources you can see that the join is created everything's fine now on filters I'm gonna add the supplier ID that was returned by the get product uh, the get products aggregate we just created and I want this supplier and I want 
my product supplier ID to be equal to the supplier ID for that. I click on done, and there you go. Uh, now we go back to our uh, to our screen action, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna reproduce this logic here again. So I'm gonna create a for each. Uh, oh, I forgot. Of course, uh, I forgot to create the full product information attribute that you have. Let's call it full product info. And I'm going to add here the product name dash category name dash. Company name. There we go. Click on done. Let's go back to screen action. And now we can go to for each of my returns of my get supplier product aggregates. What I'm going to do is once again, I'm going to sign my product combo box. Oops, my product combo box entry. Full pro oh, it's full product details. That's okay. Uh, I'm gonna set my full product details and the product ID. There we go. After that, I will append this element to my Product combo box list. And there you go. Product combo oh, product combo box entry. Go back here. And finally, I will assign my product combo enabled to true. After I've done that. I can call my Ajax refresh for my product combo box. So let's see if that is working. I'm going to publish my publish my application. Shouldn't take long. There you go. And now I have here my list of products. And if I select my top supplier, it is updated with the products from Pavlova Limited, which is the company that provides me the most products with five uh, products. As you can see, Pavlova, Alice Mountain, Carnival Tigers, Veggie Spread, the ones we've seen when we were building the aggregate. So you see how easy it is to use a special value to create customized behaviors to your combo boxes. So that's it for today's video. As usual, I hope it was useful. I hope it was interesting. My name is Jay Santos. I'm a developer evangelist slash advocate with OutSystems. My email is j.santos at outsystems.com. On Twitter, I am at joutsystems. Feel free to reach me if you have any further questions. And if you have any feedback on these videos and suggestions for topics to cover in future videos, those are very, very appreciated. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.